um, tell you a little bit about, we kind of wanted to talk a little bit about, you know, what's, what's coming down the line, what's, what's new in uh, PRT or uh, targeted radioisotope therapy. And you, and, you know, I know you're all familiar and you had really nice talks about PRT earlier. So uh, Y90 PRT has been around for a good while. And, and, uh, and uh, actually, Dr. Tom and, uh, and I and, our, and the team of great folks at Iowa um, have, been, uh, have been doing this for, well, close to, to 20 years now. This is one of our first cases with the yttrium-90 uh, Dota talk, so the, the PRT, but with Y90. And um, uh, I think you can probably see, if you look at the CT scan and then look at the, you can see the tumors. I've got them labeled there with T, and that's before the Y90. And then after the Y90, things look pretty good in the liver there. You know, the, the tumor sites have shrunk down pretty well. The image at the far right, the dark blobs are where the um, the Y90 targeted the tumor. And so, it, the, you know, tumor shrunk really well and uh, didn't go completely away. It kind of falls into that uh, partial response category. Um, but then, for a variety of reasons in this country, Y90 PRT didn't take off. Um, in Europe, they've been doing it since the 90s and they continued of course, to do Y90 PRRT in Europe. And we sent, uh, uh, you know, Tom uh, sent many patients, I think, to Europe um, in the uh, 2000s because it was not available. Uh, and then, I, you know, he had the very nice uh, presentation about Lutathera uh, this morning, and so that came next, and we, um, we have that available to us now clinically. Um, and, um, uh, but then... Uh, Here's, for example, here's a patient with Lutathera, and again, the bright yellow is where the Lutathera is targeting the tumor in the liver. And I think I've got a CT here, maybe not. Um, not advancing? There you go? Okay, sorry. So, and you can kind of see on the left, well, I'm going to, on the left, you can see the... Uh, Try to get a laser pointer on it for you. So you can see the tumor here in the CT corresponds to this intense targeting with the uh, Lutathera, bringing the radiation. And then over here after the Lutathera, tumor's pretty well shrunk and gone. So Lutathera is pretty good. The issue is, though, not everybody responds like that. Um, Probably about 20% of people don't really respond very well. Of course, that means 80% do. But then of the 80% that respond, eventually just about everybody uh, recurs in the years to come. And saw some questions about that that were answered earlier uh, today. So we, we do need to improve. We need to get better. Um, there was some talk about toxicity and I won't spend a lot of time here other than to say renal toxicity is, is in the Netter 1 trial, it was not so much an issue. It's probably still real. We'll talk about, talk about why it's still real. Um, blood toxicity um, is still an issue. And so from both an e effectiveness standpoint and, an e and a toxicity standpoint, we need to continue to do things that will um, that will improve this type or category of treatment. These are it's a rare thing that will sometimes happen. Uh, again, it's rare uh, where the tumor releases substances as a result of the radiation injury to the tumor cell and causes some uh, some some problems for patients. It's you know uncommon, one out of a hundred type thing, but it does. Uh, occur and sometimes requires hospitalization for what is, as you probably know, an otherwise outpatient uh, therapy. So let's look at ways that we can uh, make things better uh, and, and things that are being done now, going to be done in the future. Um, kind of a simple thing that, um, that is, is likely going to play a larger role in selecting folks that are likely to respond to therapy has to do with looking at 
whether or not the tumors are going to target the radioactive treatment just using a PET scan. You know, you, you all know the gallium PET scan, the gallium dotate, and that, as it turns out, is probably going to be a sort of um, uh, poor man's initial way to look a little better at selecting folks that can benefit from PRRT. Combination with chemotherapy. Um, chem some chemotherapeutic agents uh, sensitize the tumor cells to the effects of radiation. So it stands to reason that maybe giving the, the two together would be helpful in making the PRRT, PRRT more effective. Combining Y90 and lutetium, I saw a question earlier about the, the, the earlier talk um, about size. And we'll talk a little bit about why combining those two radionuclides improves our ability to affect a larger range of tumor sizes. We saw, for, for example, this morning, I think, that the data from the Netter 1, the Lutathera, looks like it works really, really good for small tumors and uh, maybe not quite as well as big tumors, for big tumors. So we'll get back to that in just a minute. Um, I'm going to talk about MIBG for a couple minutes, Azedra, which was recently approved as a targeted radionuclide treatment for patients with pheochromocytoma or similar tumors. Injecting, uh, for folks that have primarily disease in the liver, injecting directly into the artery that feeds the liver uh, looks like a really exciting approach that may improve the outcome uh, with this form of therapy. And then I'll get, at the very end, I'll get to alpha. Um, so I, you know, so my bias, and um, I'll show you just a little bit, but my bias is the next um, sort of a generational step, the biggest potential, there's things to work through, for improving the targeted radionuclide therapy is with alpha emitters. And we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that, and there's some, there's some work already started with alpha particle emitters. Antagonists, so right now, Lutathera um, is, a, is an agonist, so it binds to the receptors, and technically it, it's, it, it jump starts the receptor because um, it's an agonist. But it turns out, looks like targeting molecules similar to, to, to the dotatate uh, that don't initiate the receptor activation are going to be better for delivering radiation. And finally, I'm, I think I'm going to do this next, uh, personalized dosimetry. And this is, uh, this is an area that's um, sort of dear to, to, to my heart. We've been working on it for a long time. Um, and I think uh, also represents a potential next jump forward in the effectiveness and the degree of toxicity that we see uh, from PRRT with Lutathera and perhaps other agents. So I'm going to jump right into the whole dosimetry thing. Um, this is an article from a couple years ago, and basically what it's saying is, you know, not one size fits everybody. So you know, Lutathera, we, as we heard earlier, and as you probably know, Lutathera is given, everybody gets the same amount, you know, that 200 millicurie. Everybody gets that right now. Here's the deal, though. One person who gets 200 millicuries, a lot of that 200 millicuries may go to their kidneys. Another person who gets that 200 millicuries, not much goes to the kidneys. One person who gets the 200, a lot of the 200 goes to the tumor. Another person does not. And so what we can do and what this and many others have now for the last decade, but there are obstacles, uh, have argued is that, hey, we have this really slick way of individualizing and personalizing treatments so that each individual receives the amount most effective. Maybe it's 300 millicuries, maybe it's 100. Maybe it's eight cycles, not four. Remember, four is the current uh, Lutathera. So, um, 
These authors, among others, they believe that to adhere, if you want, if you want to optimize this therapy that we're talking about, um, and these are these are investigators from Europe, but many of the folks in this uh, in, in our country here, uh, nuclear medicine therapy should be based on individual dosimetry, and this is one of probably a dozen op-eds that have said this in the last decade. The modern, uh, modern area of personalized medicine demands measurement of patient-specific biophysical parameters to individualize treatment for maximum effectiveness. Uh, same thing. Got to do dosimetry. Got to do dosimetry. So what, what do I mean dosimetry and dose? You know, we talked about, well, everybody gets the same thing now. 200 millicuries, one size fits all. But then that one size delivers a different amount of radiation, depending on the individual, to all the different parts of the, tu the body, including the tumor. So what, you know, when we talk about dosimetry and dose, you know, dose is, it's a, it's a tough word because we think dose, well, what, what dose of Tylenol? You know, we take a gram of Tylenol. And we think, well, what's the dose of uh, Lutathera? Well, it's 200 millicures. But, in reality, that millicury thing is not dose, entirely different. And we've, we've, we have we've should have gotten a lot away from it many, many, many years ago. We didn't. So this word's kind of confusing. And uh, what it really means, when we talk about dr dose in the proper sense, we're talking about the amount of radiation energy that's deposited at all the different sites in the body, whether it's the tumor, the kidneys, the bone marrow, it's different for everybody given the same millicury number. So here's, here's just an example. This was a study out of uh, Europe, and um, they looked at a number of patients, and they did the dosimetry now. Uh, sorry, sorry. I'll get back to this. It does take a... It, has historically taken time to do appropriate individual patient dosimetry. That's one of the drawbacks. It takes three days. So that we'll get back to that in a minute. But what this group found, and this is, this is one of a number, they're not the only ones. So, so everybody got the 200. Everybody got the 200 millicuries. So what they found was, it, on the, so the x-axis, this is the fraction of individuals uh, who got 200 millicuries, but then got the same, this 27 dose, this 27 gray dose to the kidneys. So, so about 9-8% of the patients that got the 200 millicuries could only receive three cycles. Otherwise, they would exceed this safety threshold. On the other hand, there were 20% or so of individuals who could have received seven or eight cycles of the 200 and still been within the same uh, safe dose to the kidneys. This, this has been replicated. This is not uh, particularly new, but I wanted to show it to you. This is kind of different study, different way to look at the same data. And basically what it says is um, basically what it says is if you look, the absorbed dose, the dose to the kidney is over on the, um, the left-hand column here, and this is that, that actual radiation energy delivered to the kidney. And for 200 millicuries, what this shows is that in the kidney, look at the range of radiation energy deposited for that same 200 millicuries up to 10 gray versus down to two gray. So again, that big spread in the actual radiation deposited. Now, back to that whole thing where dosimetry yeah, takes two, three, four days. And now what we found, it, so our group uh, looked carefully the last three or four years, 
at Dota Talk, and what we found was that in reality you can do a single measurement, one-time deal, 48 hours after a tracer injection, and we'll know the answer to this dosimeter. We don't have to do it every day. In parallel, unrelated group from Europe said, hey, same thing's true with lutate, with lutathera. You can do a single measurement and we'll know the, the radiation energy for a person, individual, that's going to be delivered to the kidney and the bone marrow and the, uh, uh, and the, uh, I know I'm, I know I may be running a little bit low, huh? How am I, I'm not doing good on time, am I? Row three? All right, I tell you what, I'm going to, I'm going to zip here. I'm going to go to, um, this is the, the issue of combining lutetium with yttrium. So you can see big tumor, sort of smaller tumors. The bottom line is lutetium is really good for little tumors. Yttrium is really good for big tumors. Europe's been putting these two treatments together for a decade. It's retrospective data. Needs, needs to be done in a more systemized, uh, systematic fashion. But it certainly looks promising that the best way to treat this wide range of tumor size is to give both of the two radionuclides together in some fashion. OK, uh, antagonists versus agonists, I mentioned it. The antagonists, as it turns out, the antagonists are able to bind to a greater number of the somatostatin receptors than the agonist. Lutathera is an agonist. Trials are currently ongoing with an antagonist known as JR11, and I think we're going to find that it's going to be a more effective way to deliver the lutetium or the yttrium or the alpha particle emitter than the current agonist uh, targeting agent. We're going to skip that. Um, so, so it's another really neat way to make this this uh, PRT work better. If again, I think I, we mentioned it early on, is to inject the agent directly into the artery that's feeding the tumor sites, at, and we can do that pretty readily in the liver. A little harder for other sites in the body, but for people who have liver dominant disease. Uh, this is really a neat way. If you look, this, this top row, the dark areas are where the tumor is being targeted with the lutathera. This has been injected into, the lutathera is injected into the hepatic artery. And then same patient. Same patient, look at the dark areas, and you can see, see that the bottom row is the intravenous injection. The top row is the arterial injection. Look at, the, look at how much darker. A lot more lutathera goes to the tumor when you just inject it directly into the artery. So really a neat, uh, promising area. I'm going to touch a little bit on MIB, MIBG. Uh, I mentioned Azedra is now approved for uh, use clinically in pheochromocytoma and paraganglioma related neuroendocrine tumors. but. A lot of interest in using it for other neuroendocrine tumors as well. Turns out this particular receptor that grabs the MIBG is present in about half of all folks with neuroendocrine tumors. And so uh, I'm going to skip that. What we've done is, I apologize, I got a little bit behind here on the talk, but um, because the MIBG targets different receptors on the tumor from the PRRT, and because the two agents have different toxicity profiles, it naturally makes some sense to think about combining them. And what we found about five years ago in 10 patients was if we treated an individual with dotatoc alone, PRRT alone, we got we had this much radiation energy into the tumor, 6,000. But if we added, in a way that's safe, and we can do that with personalized dosimetry, MIBG, 
we were able to raise the radiation energy to the tumor by a substantial margin. And so, but what, so what we've done, we'll jump to, this was the original trial. This is the redesigned trial. Both of these are funded by the NIH. We're gonna take the two now approved agents, Lutathera and Azedra, we, we do the first standard of care treatment. So, you know, if you're eligible for Lutathera, we say, okay, great, let's, we'll give you the Lutathera standard of care. We're gonna add a little bit of tracer of the Azedra, we're gonna image, and if you're Azedra positive, we're gonna treat you with both, and we're gonna do it in a personalized dosimetric fashion. If you're, if you're negative, if your pictures are negative, the, the tumor doesn't target with Azedra, then you just go and continue on the standard of care Lutathera uh, paradigm. So, and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna skip that, because I do want to mention alpha in, uh, particles before, before I go. So up till now, we've been talking about these beta particle radiation that many of you are familiar with. That's Lutathera, Y90, Dotatoc. It's a beta particle. It's a nice little guy, and uh, there is energy, and it does kill tumors, but it does not do so nearly as well as alpha particles. Alpha particles, you can kind of think of it like they kill tumors five times as well as, as the beta particles. And... Um, they're bigger, they're heavier. If you're familiar with uh, this kind of radiation, they deliver a lot more of the energy, the dose, the actual dose, to the tumor uh, than the beta particle does. So it's, it's exciting. And on top of that, the, the length that the alpha particle travels is very, very short. And so if, if this is the normal tissue these gray balls are the normal cells, and the red balls are the tumor cells. The alpha particle emitter here, bismuth 13, 213, only fires out far enough to kill the tumor cells. Let me show you an example of why this is so exciting. Now, this is prostate cancer, but, but I'm going to point out to you that the same thing's happening with neuroendocrine tumors right now. Uh, prostate cancer, here's the lutetium prostate cancer, sort of the analog to Lutathera for prostate cancer. So here's the, the dark areas where all the tumor is, the, the beta particle lutetium is targeting the, the tumor here, but not much happens. See, patient got treated and there's still all this tumor. Then all of a sudden this actinium-225 gets substituted for the lutetium. Look what happens to the prostate cancer. Gone. And we're seeing the same thing in the very, very early um, reports with neuroendocrine tumors. And here's one of them. Again, this is from Europe. So again, the targeting agent is well... Yeah. The targeting agent is the, um, the dotatoc, dotatate molecule. But in this case, bismuth-213 is an alpha. And again, this patient is one of eight in this study that was treated with lutathera, and things didn't work out. Remember, about 20%, that's, that's the case. But look, what's, look what happens to the tumors, so the bright, the bright areas. Look what happens to the tumors after the bismuth-213. They're gone. So, I mean, that's exciting, and, and don't, I, d I don't mean to say that there aren't a lot of things that have to be figured out, but having said that, if you give me just a couple more minutes, so the University of Iowa, and, and then separately a group called Radiomedics, um, are working with this alpha emitter, I know it says beta there, but the alphas come down the line. This alpha emitter led 212, and we're opening a phase one clinical trial. We're scheduled to open it next year. It's funded by the NIH. We have to do some preliminary before we actually start the trial with lead dota talk or dota tate. Um, and I'm going to do one more slide, and then I'll stop. This is. Uh, 
So that's just the design of the trial. Um, it's, it's there, we're ready to go, we have the money, but we gotta do a few things first. So Alpha's, I think, the big thing in the next five years that's, that's gonna change the way we uh, are able to improve PRRT. And then some of the other things that we, we talked about will be smaller incremental improvements, I think, as well. Uh, thank you very much. I appreciate uh, giving me the time.